Welcome to Colingo.com. This is Anthony. My class here will be a 100 level class. It's a high beginner English course. And we will be talking about pop culture, about celebrities who are related, who maybe you didn't know that. So if you're watching, please join us and uh, we can begin the discussion. Good evening, Ken. Yes, good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, yes, good afternoon with you. Uh, morning here. <laughs> uh, good morning. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, 11 o'clock here. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, so I'm drinking my coffee. Ah, uh, yeah, because of the summertime was over. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Normally, normally it would be, what, noon here? But now mm -hmm. it's 11. So this is... This is the regular time, and that was mm -hmm. daylight savings time. This mm -hmm. is normal time. Yeah. So, but how are you today? I'm good. Mm -hmm. I've uh, I've had a very very busy week, but it's been good. I'd rather have a busy oh. week than a boring week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's yeah, that's very productive. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's been good. It's been it's been very busy. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was a very busy day. I woke up. I bought a tuxedo. Mm -hmm. I oh, taught mm -hmm. five classes. <laughs> and tuxedo? Then I, what, what, yeah. Really? <laughs> yes, I bought a tuxedo this morning, uh, yesterday. And then uh -huh. I taught five classes. Then I played in a polka band, played my accordion mm -hmm. in a polka band. Then I had mm -hmm. choir rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Then there was a choir party after that. And I got, oh. home, 11, I got home at 11 or 11.30 mm -hmm. p.m. Oh. Very long day. Mm -hmm. What what kind of instrument are you playing? Um, in uh, the polka band, I was playing uh, an accordion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like the squeeze box. Thing. It's like it's got. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Which I've never played before. I had to learn, teach myself how to play. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> but it was fun. Though. I can show you. Oh wait, I can show you a picture. Uh, let's see if I can figure this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is this is classic. You're gonna like this. Let's see here. One moment. And then we'll and then we'll start the class. It's the busy time of uh, Kalingo because there's lots of all right, lots of other classes going on. Oh, it seems like I have a slow computer. Oh, here we go. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Yes. laughs> mm. Yes, it's uh is it loading correctly? It's not does it look like it's the right doesn't look like it's the right uh yes, anyway. Pretty good stuff there. <laughs> um, so yes, pretty classic. Anyway, I was uh it was my first time playing the accordion. I had to dress up for it, you know, so mm. but, um, it was pretty fun. We played yeah. about 40 minutes. And there was mm -hmm. a tuba player and a trumpet player and a mm -hmm. clarinet player and uh, also. Oh. So, yeah, I I, I played play accordion. Play? Mm -hmm. Pardon? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. You played accordion? Okay, now, and I, hello, hello? Um, I asked if you played any instruments. Oh, yeah, I yeah, used, you hear me? I used to. Yeah, okay. yeah, I hear you now. Yes. Yes, I pl I played guitar, and yeah, uh -huh. and I touched accordion <laughs> in my school days. Yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You touched or taught? What did you say? Because it's I I I I played some easy song, uh -huh. uh, yeah, of, of in, in, uh, with accordion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Wow, well, that's cool. So you've also played accordion. Do they <laughs> yeah. have is accordion popular in Japan? Is that I didn't know people played accordion in Japan. Not, not nowadays. But uh, when I was a kid, I think every school has accordion in really? the music. Uh, room, yeah, I think so. Wow, I didn't. Yeah. Know. yeah, that's interesting. Huh. Um, that's cool. I didn't know about that. I, didn't, I never <laughs> thought about uh, uh, Japanese and accordion. Seem like two very different worlds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the kind of uh, a lot of different instruments are there over here. So, mm -hmm. in, in in yeah, so. I played a, a lot of different instruments, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, I'm not really? good at, yeah. But I'm not good good at playing instruments, actually. Yeah. yeah. You can practice. But <laughs> yeah, practice, yes. I uh, have, yes, that's right. So. I practiced a lot for guitar and <laughs> drums. And stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, this is not a music class, but it is a pop culture class, so. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about subject verb agreement. This is technically a, a beginner level class, but we'll teach it. I'll teach it a little bit more advanced mm -hmm. today, since you're advanced. Um, but I do want to ask you. Um, so tell me about your average morning. Uh, run through it with me. Tell me what you do usually in your morning. Oh, wake up, and I need some caffeine. <laughs> to wake up. So recently, I used to drink coffee, but recently I I drink uh, Earl Grey tea. What? Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Oh, Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Earl Grey. Yeah. That's that. Um, Earl. Yeah, Earl. 
Not that's not or, hard vowel. Yeah. Uh, vowel. Yeah. Schwa R. <laughs> okay. Or grill tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's drink uh, drinking drinking type yogurt. Uh huh. Yogurt. Yeah. Yes. Uh, drinkable yogurt kind of. Yeah. 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 And how how can I say what can I say in English? Um, drinking type yogurt. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. There's different kinds. There's one called like uh, kefir. Kefir. Okay. Yeah, and I, but I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. And then there's other, but there's others. Uh, there's just I don't know what you call that. I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, like yogurt juice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yogurt juice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yogurt uh, juice. I don't know. <laughs> and and uh, eating banana, eating a banana. Uh huh. Mm. That's your typical uh, breakfast. Yeah, breakfast. Pretty light breakfast, but it's healthy. Yeah, kind of. I right after I wake, I I cannot eat uh, heavy stuff. Ah. So and some some uh, fruit granola with soy milk and yogurt. Ah. Yeah. That's a typical breakfast. That's very healthy. Banana, fruits, granola. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Tasty. I like granola. I haven't had granola in a long time. I just thought of that. I'm going to go buy some granola. I love granola. Granola and yeah, soy I love milk. It. Uh, I, love, I like soy milk better than, better than real milk. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I stocked uh, a lot of fruits, granola. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You went stock? Uh, stock. I stock. Yeah, a lot of I stock. It. Mm, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it lasts for a while if you keep it, for, you know, if you can keep it, keep it sealed up and fresh. It can stay, it can stay for a long time. So, mm -hmm. uh, granola is nice because you could eat it dry or you could eat it in a, in cereal with milk. Yeah. And tasty. U usually, I, you know, I I in sp spread the yogurt and soy milk. Mm -hmm. Spread <laughs> on on the uh, fruit granola. Uh, uh, you pour probably. Pour, yeah, pour, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spread is spread. Yeah, bath, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, okay. That would be good. That'd mm -hmm. be very tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. I. In the, in the, uh, Amer uh, uh, the university cafeteria, uh, you know, I I chose a lot of, you know, kind of, uh, it's it's a eat as much you want style, buffet style, buffet style. So, yeah, choice a lot and uh, oatmeal, uh, donuts, cereals, and uh, omelet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually, I chose maybe donuts and sausage, <laughs> kind of, or egg, scrambled <laughs> egg, and some vegetables. Uh, maybe it's fruit mm -hmm. uh, as a breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's a much heavier breakfast than your Japanese breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> donuts and sausage is a lot different than uh, yogurt yeah. and granola. <laughs> so, so I, I saw one student eat a. Uh, Tons of bacon uh, with coffee and bread. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was amazed at that. Wow. Yeah. A bunch of bacon, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's something. That's something. Uh, hey, Mark. Welcome. Thank you. Hey, how are, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. Uh, Ken and I were. Hello. Uh, uh, <laughs> hello, <yeah>. Mark. <laughs> we were just having a discussion about. Uh, our regular morning. What do we do in the average morning? And now we've just been talking about breakfast for the last five, ten minutes, ten, ten, five minutes. Oh. Yes, I uh, we all. I always end up talking about food in my classes. Yeah. <laughs> Very fun. Everyone likes to talk about. Food. You know, you are not alone. There's another teacher, a new one. It's Timothy. One of his. He loves food, you know. He's always talking about food and the food he wants to, to try. Uh, Timothy. Oh, Timothy. <laughs> yeah. I met him. So you are not alone. Good. Yeah, I'm obsessed with. I love talking about food and learning about different foods and trying new foods. Um, awesome. 
Yeah, we were just talking about what do you do in your average morning when you wake up? What is, what is your routine? He's talking about breakfast. Mm, anything, but especially breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I definitely I don't have breakfast, you know, mm. as incredible for you Americans because you, I mm. think we, you guys love. Uh, mm, there's a lot. I know a lot of people that don't eat breakfast. Yeah, some, a lot of people you know, don't breakfast. It's because I'm always in a hurry when I, when I have to fish in the morning, so I mm -hmm. just, you know, I just have a quick coffee, cup of coffee, and just go. And uh, but usually people have bread and cheese and ham, orange juice and so on. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, um, uh, I'm trying to. To have bacon because it's you guys, <laughs> bacon and eggs every day, and uh, because every, you know everybody loves bacon here, but uh, people usually don't have it in the morning with breakfast. But they are, as I know a friend of mine that is trying to 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 incorporate it to his breakfast is bacon and eggs and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why the average people eat in the morning. Really? Okay. That's a common breakfast, but it's it's a it's a heavy breakfast to have every morning. But I I do that sometimes. It's delicious. It's delicious. But I need to eat breakfast. I'm different. Like if I don't eat breakfast in the morning, I my whole day is backwards. Like I just get I can't think straight, and I get really hungry. And if I drink coffee without eating, oh my gosh, my, I just get so hungry. So like my, the coffee makes me more hungry. So I can't just drink a cup of coffee and then go to work. I just can't do that. I need to like eat a huge breakfast uh, and drink some coffee, and I'm and then I drink coffee after. And I'm drinking my coffee now. And and then I have lunch, you know, a small lunch, and then I have a you know a small you know medium sized dinner or something. That's 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 my thing. I need a big breakfast because of my metabolism. I, uh, I get too hungry. <laughs> that's the way I work. So. But everyone's everyone's different. I know a lot of people that don't eat any breakfast. They just can't. It's or they don't feel like it, or they just you know, yeah. And uh, Ken here says that he eats a pretty light breakfast. He says he doesn't want to eat anything heavy in the morning. So everyone has a different different routine. Um, I was telling Ken before this is technically a high beginner class, 100 level, but we'll teach it to an advanced level since it's just you two right now. We do have three. Three viewers were watching, um, and I have no idea who is watching, but they might be. Uh, if you are 100 level, if you are beginner level, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking a little bit more about advanced stuff today. So, um, what else is new with you, Mark? I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, nothing much. I'm going to go back to work next Monday. I'm still on vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I had to go back, <laughs> and uh, you know, I like, but it to be kind of busy because my schedule is it become completely crazy. I sometimes I'll have class in the morning, and then in the afternoon, and then in the evening. So I'll be quite busy until the end of the year. But that's mm -hmm. cool, you know. It's that's life. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm just relaxing, enjoying my last days. Right on. At home. Cool. So you said you're on vacation now. Why is this like? What kind of vacation is this? No, I just because my daddy, my mom, uh, had a surgery. I had. I can say had. Right. Now my mom. Your, oh, your mom had a surgery. Yeah, and so, but she's okay. So mm. I, I need to stay at home. You know. To take care of her. That's why. Uh -huh. Oh, but she's all right though. Yeah, she is. She's, mm -hmm. she's fine, really. Anyway, um, I have to work until December twenty first, and then I'll be back only in March. So that's okay. Ah, uh -huh. <sighs> all right. Okay. All right. So now I see what's going on in your world. Um, so, um, 
I need to just uh, I need to just cover the the lessons that we're supposed to be working on today, um, and then we can move on to some discussion material. But um, so the uh, the pronunciation skill we're talking about is s ending, and I know I'm sure you guys have we've learned this like 300 times. But um, uh, can maybe you can teach it to me? That way I can that way I can check it off my list. <laughs> Yes. So, um, uh, when you end the word in s, um, there are how many how many possible pronunciations? How are the different ways? Uh, different ways you can pronounce? Three ways, I think. I mean, three. Yeah. Three ways. Yes, three ways to pronounce s. And. Uh, so what uh, can you give me some uh, examples of the different ways we can pronounce it? Mm. <laughs> For example, uh, the word cat. If I if I pluralize, uh, I would say cats with mm -hmm. uh, s and d. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Ken, did you say something? I didn't quite hear you there. Uh, I just just cat s. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Same thing. So? Yeah. Yep. No, All right. Z. Z. Okay. Can you give me an example of a z? Uh, example. Oh. Uh, <laughs> example. Example. Uh. Uh. Alright. Uh, cups. Cups. Yeah, tables, tables, table, TVs. That will TVs, work. TVs, TVs, tables, TV? tables, tables, TVs. Works. Yeah. yeah. Tables works. Because all is a is a voiced. Concept. A voice. Okay. Oh, I just voice. gave I just gave you guys a hint. All right. Z, uh, Z sound. Oops, that's not the right letter. So cats tables. Uh, there's uh, you said three ways. So what's the third way? Eats. Taxis. Well, taxis would be a Z sound. Z. Ah, okay. Because mm, uh, yeah, no but you're close. Uh, what about ES? Yes. All right. So, what's uh, an example of a word that has a S? Uh, coach, coaches. Coaches? Yeah. All right. Good. Coaches. So, the word is coach, and then we say coaches. We don't say coach. We say coaches. So, now we have cats. Tables and coaches and coaches. These ones are the only ones that we actually pronounce uh, any kind of extra e there. So um, it's the only time we ever add a syllable is with the e s ending. So um, so why? Uh, how do we know the difference? How do we know when to pronounce s, when to pronounce z, and when to pronounce e s? Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. If it is a voice a voiceless, uh, it should be S. And it it is voiced, it should be Z Z. Okay. So what do you mean by voiced and vo voiceless? Is that uh, voiceless? if I touch the throat if the throat vibrates, that's voiced. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's throat is not vibrate, it's voiceless. Right. Yes, of course. So if you use your voice to make the last consonant, then it's a voiced consonant, of course. If you don't use your voice, I'm just using my tongue and some air, that is a voiceless consonant. And so the voiceless consonants, words that end in that, Pluralize it, it sounds, and then uh, the buzzing consonants have a zzz buzzing s. And what about 
Last one. And I think also, mm -hmm. and I also think that when we use the contractions with uh, vowels, for example, she, uh, right. apostrophe s becomes a z, right? Yeah. Any uh, any vowels. So yeah. voice consonants and vowels. <laughs> We never talk about vowels, but because vowels are, are voiced always, so yeah, uh, I like so um, if you make any word that ends in a vowel pluralized or possessive, it's gonna be z because it's a voice. Uh, okay. So yeah, right. really, we should be saying voiceless consonants, voiced consonants, and vowels. And what's the third one? How do we, when, when do we, why is coaches different? Because ch is a voiceless consonant, so how come it's not s? What's the, what is the anomaly here? This one kind of doesn't fit. Jeez. Any other um, any other endings besides ch to make it es? So the trick here um, is these are also voiceless, but this is the voiceless consonants that are. I'm gonna just. Copy and paste them here. Oh my goodness, that takes a long time. Ah, uh, the spinning beach ball of death. Okay, so S-like sounds. Mm -hmm. So voiceless. So up here we have voiceless, except S-like. And here we have all the S-like sounds. We have s, sh, ch, j, and z. Uh, and I guess j, j would work. So we have j and j. I guess there's not much j in English. It's more j, I suppose. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I don't remember the phonology of my own language. Sorry. So anyway. And this this j is for when talking about the y sound. Uh, j sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like near. Yes. And, oh, okay. Well, that would be. Um, that would be if it. You mean it ends in a yes sound? Well, we don't. Nothing ends in a yes sound, and <laughs> things start. No. Oh no! Sorry. No, I am just. I'm just missing the studio because you are, you are typing letters and all. I was thinking about sounds. That's why. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get confused. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> these definitely are sounds, but the, but when I type these, I'm not using I. Yeah, you are typing lab. I'm a s, sh, ch, j, and z. Those are the so they all have a similar. They all, I make the same face when I make all these sounds. Oh, it's clip. It's like s, s, sh, ch, j, and z. So I'm, I don't move my mouth from any of them. And all those end in an s. S coaches, washes, uh, beaches. Uh, Age, ages, um, uh, ads is no, that's not a word. <laughs> uh, I can't think of a Z ending. Uh, roses. No. It's spelled with an S, but it's a Z. We pronounce rose. So roses is a very good example. So, all right. So that's that's the trick. And if you can remember that last one, then you have all three. And that's a rule that. We don't really break. We love to break our rules in English, like any language. But this one, it's a pretty, uh, pretty strict rule. So if you remember that one, you can always remember how to pronounce new words that you haven't seen before. So um, I'm gonna just completely skip our grammar skill today because it's subject-verb agreement, uh, which is just like when to use want and wants, like I want and he wants, and stuff like that. I think you guys know how to conjugate verbs already, so I'm, I'm going to skip over that part. I think you guys are advanced enough that we can just...
continue to our now this um, pop culture class this is just an article I found um, about um, it's about celebrities and some that you might know some that you might not know some that I don't know um, and it's telling us about celebrities who uh, are related uh, they're like family but you might not know that they were family so to you know like you know actors actresses you know whatever um, singers models whatever um, and um, that's that's what this article is about it's not the most interesting article in the world <laughs> I'm gonna start teaching less less pop culture classes and maybe zero <laughs> Because I the, the pop culture stuff I teach is more like history and culture, like the history of pop culture. I like talking about the history of pop culture, like like the birth of radio, or talking about iPods, or talking about uh, the Beatles, or talking about um, uh, you know television in the 1960s, or you know like that's the kind of stuff I like to talk about. So I think I'm just gonna stop teaching pop culture classes and teach <laughs> teach some more other things, maybe some technology, maybe some news classes. I don't do that. So, but this will be, this is very much like, you know, like celebrity news, but it's, it's, you know, it's, but it is what it is. So let's check it out. Uh, oh, we're missing the first picture, it looks like. There should be a picture right here. Uh, one moment here while this loads. Seem to be seem to be kind of frozen here. There we go. Um, so it begins. Uh, yeah, this should be a picture here. Uh, in Hollywood, it's it's all about who you know, but some celebrity family ties still fly under the radar. I'm going to give you this link. What does that mean to fly under the radar? Invisible. What are they talking about? Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Unknown. Um, yeah. Something if you don't really know, it's 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 not 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 commonly known or not noticeable. People don't notice it. You're flying under radar. Literally, it's when um, you can't detect it. You know, if you if you fly your plane underneath the radar, then you can't find it. So it's like hidden. It's like a secret. Flying under radar. So. I think I. We cannot see the picture. Yeah, well, let's see. Can you see any of them? Let's see. Let's uh, let's see. No. Okay. I... Let me look for another one here. Okay, here we go. Mm. Uh, oh, what? Oh, I don't remember this one. Okay, Al Roker and Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> mm. So he's a famous weatherman, like maybe the most famous weatherman in... Uh, United States and well, he's Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they looks like you know each other. Uh, so he may think he's too old for a Drake concert, but today weatherman Al Roker has ties to another mecca of young adult adoration, the Hunger Games. Um, the uh, family tree in Al's neck of the woods branches out to none other than rock star and Hunger Games act. I don't know he acted in Hunger Games. Uh, Lenny Kravitz. The two are cousins. Interesting. It's funny. I don't think they look alike at all. <laughs> um, um, what does that mean, neck of the woods? If you're in somebody's neck of the woods. Maybe family tree or something? No, this is more about geography. The mm. family tree in Al's neck of the woods. Well, in this they, say, they live in the same in the same area or country. Yeah, that's usually what it means. Although I guess the family tree in Asnik is the same. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're trying to go. Usually it means in the yeah. Usually it means in the same neighborhood, or the same region. Uh, oh, neighborhood. Sorry. So it's usually like 
hey, if you're ever in my neck of the woods, give me a call and we'll hang out. If you're ever in my, you know, in my area. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Brook Shields and Merrill Street. I didn't know that. With, neither did I. Neither did. Yes, with such long and successful careers in Hollywood, it's kind of unbelievable that these veteran actresses uh, have never. Hey, that's not. That shouldn't be spelled this way. That should be. Uh, that should be E S. That should be an E S ending. <laughs> that's not. Uh, the, they're they're making this possessive. That shouldn't be possessive, right? Actresses. It should be actresses. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, sorry, mistakes. Uh, so that these veteran actresses have never shared the screen on an acting project. What they do share is family connections. The two are second cousins once removed. What does that mean? Once. Yeah. Once, once removed. removed. Um, it's. Uh, I think it's. You know. I think. It means that it's, they're not necessarily blood. It might be uh, uh, um, uh, legally uh, because of marriage. Uh, <clears throat> let me just. So like, there's like one. They're not necessarily uh, related completely, like by family. So let me just make sure I. That's a good question because it's it's it can be really confusing all these different relatives. Um, runs removed. Um, it's let's see. I think it's just like, oh boy. I'm not even gonna try to look it up. It's, it's too 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 confusing for me right now. But I think there's just one extra step between them. All right. Um, Lily Allen and Alfie Allen, uh, many don't recognize the connection between uh, Theon Greyjoy from Game of Thrones and musician Lily Allen. They are brother and sister. Uh, Alfie Allen's character had a rough go of it in season three of the HBO series, but at least the suffering was fictional, unlike when his older sister dropped less than a, uh, a less, this less than flattering single about him in 2007. Alfie peaked at uh, 15 on the UK singles chart. I don't know that. I don't know what song they're talking about, and I'm not going to listen to it. Seems they are British. Yeah, that might be. Mm-hmm. Snoop Dogg, Brandy, and Ray J. So. Uh, his popular home movie starring Kim Kardashian aside, Sexy Can I, singer Ray J, is perhaps the most well-known as the brother of recording artist Brandy. What you might not know is that both artists are first cousins with hip-hop legend and cannabis enthusiast Snoop Lion, formerly known as Snoop Dogg, in case you weren't aware of the rapper's recent Rastafarian reincarnation. <laughs> Yes. What are they talking about here with uh, Rastafarian reincarnation? Because he's a cannabis, cannabis enthusiast. Yeah, he's a or cannabis maybe because enthusiast. of it. Yeah, cannabis. Uh, maybe because of his dreadlocks. What does that mean, cannabis enthusiast? Uh, he's into some pot. Yeah, he's into pot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he likes pot. He loves smoking pot. So and then what? So what is what about Rastafarian reincarnation? What is what are they talking about here? Yeah, because he has yeah with uh, some dreadlocks like, mm-hmm. like Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Bob Marley was a Rastafarian. It's like a yeah, it's like a new religion. It's, it's like another religion. He, yeah. He's kind of, Starting, uh, he's he's changing his life now in the middle of his life, and when you say reincarnation, um, it's like to be born again, to re reincarnate, yeah. to uh, 
So it's like born again Rastafarian. Una Chaplin and Charlie Chaplin. Uh, another Game of Thrones person. <laughs> she earned her royal ties in Game of Thrones when her character shacked up with Rob Stark, King of the North, but in real life, Una Chaplin has some Hollywood royalty connections of her own. The Spanish actress is granddaughter to the iconic actor, comedian, and filmmaker, Charlie Chaplin. It's weird to see Charlie Chaplin without the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> weird. Uh, Emma and Julia Roberts. Emma Roberts has been making uh, a name of herself, a name of her own in film and TV roles like We're the Millers and American Horror Story Coven. But the New York-born actress had an early inspiration in the industry. Academy Award winner Julia Roberts, Emma's aunt. Uh, by the way, uh, by the way, Anthony, could you explain the, the meaning of this word, Coven? <laughs> oh. I'm watching uh, yeah. the show and I and I looked it up at the dictionary, but I couldn't find. It. Yeah, Coven is like um, is like a coven or a coven is like a, a, a gathering of it's about witches. So this is good for a Halloween. We missed Halloween, but it's like it's uh, you're talking about like witches and and uh, ah, okay magic. Yeah, the TV show is about witches. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, it's about uh, a group of witches. Basically, the coven. Yeah. Coven. Have you ever seen the movie um, Rosemary's Baby? Oh, awesome. You seen it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a great movie. And at the end, uh, when she's going crazy and she's like, uh, she's a witch. You know, I think she has a coven. She has a coven and all this. And the guy and his, her husband's like, oh, that's nonsense. But she she uses the word <laughs> coven. That's one of my favorite movies. Incredible. Yeah, it's such a good movie. Mia Farrow. All right. Uh, Zoe Deutsch and Leah Thompson. Uh, so Zoe landed a big starring role in the highly buzzed upcoming young adult offering Vampire Academy, but the Los Angeles native is no longer, uh, is no stranger to show business. Leah Thompson of Back to the Future and Caroline in the City fame is Zoe's mother. Uh, Zoe has even been featured in the brief arc on Thompson's ABC family show, Switched at Birth. Uh, So, I don't know. These people, Stephen and Robbie Arnell. uh, Fantastic. Fantastic looking man candy to appeal to their younger skewing female demo. But who knew they were pulling from the same gene pool? Breakout star Stephen Arnell, uh, who heads up Arrow, is cousins with Robbie Arnell, who brings his easy eyed talent to the new CW series, The Tomorrow People. Uh, by the way, younger skewing female demo. What, is, what are they trying to say here? Um, in this case, um, demo in this context means it's short. Usually it's demonstration, but in this context, it's short for demographic. So they're talking about the kind of people who like these guys are young girls. <laughs> That's all they're saying is that young girl, young girls love these guys. That's what they're saying. Younger skewing female demo. This means young girls love these dudes. That's what that means. Okay, and finally, uh, we have uh, Jenny McCarthy and Melissa McCarthy. Uh, it could be due to common last name, but or they're relatively independent from one another career trajectories, but many are surprised to hear that Melissa and Jenny McCarthy are cousins. Uh, while Melissa has become something of a comedic powerhouse uh, whose phone has likely been ringing off the hook since Bridesmaids, McCarthy gained notoriety modeling for Playboy and recently joined as co-host of The View. Um, Trajectory. 
Oh, Ken's gone. What's trajectory mean? Um, I don't know how can explain that we have the same word in Portuguese. Oh, you have a similar word? Yeah, it's just like yeah. the trajectory. It's like the it's like uh, the uh, the path that uh, yeah. follows yeah. The trajectory. Maybe you see a rocket in there. The trajectory, the whatever the arc of that is. Yeah, it's, funny. it's kind of a scientific term, but they, you can also talk about a, somebody's career having a trajectory, having a going up like that. And someone's getting more popular. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, can you think of any other famous relatives uh, that, that they forgot? Any ones that you know about besides these? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Everyone, everybody knows they are related to some, someone who's famous. So. <laughs> Yeah, maybe because of this last name, sometimes like uh, Emma Roberts and Julia Roberts. Uh, you know, you have that, uh, those guys, uh, Baldwin, Baldwin. What's that? The uh, Alec Baldwin. Oh, oh, um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Baldwin brothers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some famous uh, relatives. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Alec Baldwin and who else? Uh, Billy Baldwin. And also, uh, what's the name of the other one? Alec <laughs> Baldwin. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> also, Ridley Scott has, a, I think, his brother, Tony Scott, was also a film director. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah. Ridley Scott and Tommy Scott. Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Uh -huh. uh, Nicholas Cage is is related to to oh God. Michael and Kirk Douglas. Some super yeah. <laughs> the two of the greatest actors of all time, Michael. And, <laughs> yeah. okay. and also that family from Henry Fonda, Peter Fonda, oh, and James yeah. Fonda. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Fonda. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Uh, a lot of these uh, famous families. Yeah. And then there's also celebrities in the world that uh, probably shouldn't be celebrities. <laughs> and people are like, why are these people famous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Can you... Th Think of any celebrities that shouldn't be celebrities? <laughs> wow. Oh, a lot of them. <laughs> uh, Christina Aguilera, Beyonce, <laughs> Rihanna. <laughs> uh, that, that new one. Uh, I don't think it's Miley Cyrus or something. Oh, Miley Cyrus. I haven't really heard. I haven't really heard much of her stuff. I kind of like I like some things by Rihanna and Beyonce, but um, yeah, they are great singers. Really, you know, that's not the that's not my cup of tea. I mean, the, the uh -huh. yeah, their some style, of those guys, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. but I, yeah, but you know what? I, I like I like very much my good pleasure, but I like very much a song from I think it's from Beyonce. Its name is called it's called. Listen, because just because of the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which song? Listen, you said? Listen, no. This is the name of the song. Yeah. I don't know. That. Is, that from, is that a new song or an old song? Kind of old. I, I, I think um, off of uh, a couple of albums ago, she had that uh, album. The same album with... Uh, 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 What's it called? The Put a Ring on It song, the, the uh, Single Ladies? Oh, like, not yeah. that song. Yeah. But there's another song from that same album called Disappear, and I do a, I do a guitar cover of uh, Disappear. 
the oh, really? <laughs> oh yeah, I've, I've done it live before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the, the, the lyrics are really, are really incredible. It doesn't matter if about it. Yeah. Yeah. Artists. So, I'll do a Beyonce class and and I'll and I'll sing my Beyonce cover for that. <laughs> I have to try. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, have you listened to the new um, Arcade Fire album? Yeah, I just listened to it uh, two days ago. I think. Yeah, when it came out. I'm just yeah, I just listened to it. Uh, there's some pretty cool stuff on it. Really? Mm -hmm. Have you heard it? No, no, no. I, I yeah. didn't. I haven't yet. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but it would do that. Um, I really like the. There's one of the singles that I really like is. Uh, I think it's a, just a great pop song. Uh, Afterlife is good. You know. Afterlife. It's, there's a. That's, that's like the one of the leading singles. It's a really catchy. Like it sounds like New Order. It sounds like 80s pop. Oh. Um, cool. Yeah, it's really good. Really, I mean, it's very classic sounding, but it's yeah. I, the album sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, yeah, they are really great. You know, I I once went to a concert right with Arcade Fire. Oh, really? Arcade Fire's concert, and they are incredible on stage. I guess, oh, cool, uh, cool. Yeah, they are very performatic. <laughs> they do a lot of mm -hmm. stuff, and uh, they and, uh -huh. the, and they sound really. Uh, live on the album, you know, because some bands you, uh -huh. you when you go to a concert you see, oh my god, you can even recognize the songs. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are really great, incredible. It's a huge band. I think there are six or seven people. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big band. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I uh, I actually have to go now. This is the end of end of our class, but uh, we got four more classes if you uh, if you're not busy. Today, okay. and, um, but it was good to talk to you again, Mark, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye. You bet. All right, take care.